This is the Henderson Hasselbalch equation that you have learned about in the previous checkpoint. Notice an interesting property. When I add the same amount, a concentration of acid and salt, log 1 over 1 is 0. Therefore, pH equals to pKa. Oh, cool. But what is the significance of this? Remember that the two active components of a buffer are the acid and salt. The acid reacts with any incoming base, the salt, re which is a conjugate base, reacts with any incoming acid. These two components are essential to the buffering properties of the solution. So if we want to make a really good buffer that is equally good in buffering both acid and base, we must have a high and equal concentration of the salt and the acid so that it can react with equal amounts of incoming acid and base. We then say that this buffer is at its maximum buffering capacity. So how can we get a buffer to be at maximum buffering capacity? Well, if the concentration of the acid and base are equal, then going by the henderson hasselbalch equation, pH will simply be just pKa. So for any acidic buffer, if it is to absorb the most acid and base without significant change to pH, then we must adjust the concentration of acid and salt to make them equal and this brings the pH to a pKa. Or conversely, if pH is at pKa, then the buffer is at the maximum buffering capacity. We can apply this concept to bases as well. The HH equivalent equation for bases is this one, which if you make the concentrations of salt and base the same, you will get pOH equals to pKb. Now, how strong then is a buffer that we make resistant to pH changes? Formally, buffer capacity is defined as beta equals to a change in moles of added base over, or more specifically, the hydroxide ions over the change in pH. That means if an acidic buffer has high resistance to pH change, pH change per mole of base added is low. The beta term hence becomes bigger because we are take a constant divided by a small term and it reflects the buffering capacity of the buffer. Now, obviously, the amount of buffering a buffer can handle is related to the concentration of acid and base, and it's conjugate acid or base. How much can the sponge for stray acid or base absorb before it stops becoming a buffer? Because we've always been saying small change, small addition. How small is this small? The P well, the pH buffer range is generally defined as pH at maximum buffering capacity plus minus 1. That might not seem like a lot to you, but when you do equilibrium calculations for buffers, you realize that buffers are actually quite resistant to pH changes, and to change the pH by 1 is quite significant. Let us try solving such calculations so that we can see the buffering in action for ourselves.